Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of AirShaper. In our last video, we discussed how you can interpret the results coming from an external aerodynamics calculation. In this video, we're going to teach you how to make those visualizations yourself and how to create data. So let's get started with Paraview. Now, Paraview is an open source visualization package that you can freely download. Just visit paraview.org and find the flavor that you need for Windows, Mac or whatever system you're on. So I'm going to use open foam data, um, which I have prepared here. Um, there's always a dummy file .foam, which will just tell Paraview to look in the constant folder for the mesh and so on, and in the latest time folder uh, to get the data for the latest time, the end of your calculation. So the first thing we're going to do is load the data, and you see a few options here. Um, you can refresh if you have modified the data in the meantime. You can use to use, uh, choose to use the decomposed case. If you're running, running on multiple processors, you will have multiple uh, folders called processor 1, 2, 3, 4. You can use it directly, or in this case, everything has been reconstructed into one case. Um, I'll leave these options for what they are. Typically, you would skip the zero time, because this is the initialization of your simulation. Um, and then you can choose which mesh region you want to show. Um, and this contains both the, the, the complete volume mesh as the surface mesh. And we're going to start with looking at the surface mesh, which is what you would see on the object um, that you're analyzing in the virtual window in this case. So you can select all regions. And then what we're going to do is just disable everything that is the wind tunnel itself, which is the bottom, the inlet, the internal mesh, which is the complete flow around the object. Left is the left wall of the tunnel, uh, outlet of the tunnel, right and top. That's the mesh selection. Later on, we will go to the volume mesh. And then you can select which arrays you want to show. Now, on the surface for this tutorial, uh, we're just going to look at the velocity, which is normally zero, except for on the wheels. Um, we're going to look at the pressure and the wall shear stress. Then you click Apply. OK, so now the results have been loaded. Um, can take some time depending on your memory and so on. Um, and as you can see, it automatically loaded the pressure. Um, now, if you don't like the scale values, what you can do is click this button here and just uh, choose a different scale. If you want to go from minus 100 to 100 plus 100, for example, this is what you would get. And if you don't like uh, the color graphs, um, you can actually go to the presets click another one and click apply, for example, and then you have a, a completely different color scheme, depending on what you like, depending on what is the default in your industry. You can also select um, the velocity. Now, in this case, you'll see that it is blue or zero everywhere on the surface, and that's normal. If you run a simulation or if you go do measurements in real life, the velocity on the surface is always zero because the air sticks to it. Even if you have the smoothest surface in the world, the air will still stick to it, and it's a zero uh, surface, unless you're doing some kind of electric uh, manipulation of the flow. Um, but apart from that, it's always zero, except for the wheels. Because in this simulation, we applied a, rotating, a rotation to the wheels um, on this car. And this car, by the way, is the drive air model, which is a benchmark model for automotive aerodynamics that is used in the industry, in wind tunnels and in simulations. So you'll see that the velocity is actually zero at the center. And then it gets larger and larger as you move out, which is normal because the um, radius increases and thus uh, the tangential velocity increases as well. So let's go back to the pressure. That's the one we had before. And what you can also see is the wall shear stress. So the pressure was actually the force pushing perpendicular to the surface. The wall shear stress is the force of the air when it slides across the surface, so parallel to the surface. Um, we can again play a bit with the value. Uh, this is always positive. Um, so what we will do now is set it to 0.5, for example, just to get some more gradient. And then you can see that uh, because you have separation on the wheels, you see this in the effect of the flow after the wheels, you have separation at the back and thus low friction and so on. You see the effect of the mirror um, that influences the flow on the body of the car. Um, you have the stagnation at the front, which means you have low surface friction and so on. For more details, just watch the previous video on how to interpret an aerodynamics report. Here we will focus on the visualization techniques and one extra thing I would like to show is that whether it's pressure or velocity or, or, or wall shear stress you can actually select something which is called surface LIC which is uh, an integration uh, convolute method uh, to visualize the streamlines now 
you may not have this enabled by default. So you have to go to Tools, Manage Plugin, uh, and then go to Surface LIC. In my case, it's already loaded. Um, if it's not, you can load selected, and you can also uh, check the auto load button. So it will auto always load when you uh, load your case or open Paraview in general. So what you can do now is instead of Surface, select the Surface LIC which we'll call this function. Um, now, if you don't see anything straight away, what you probably need to do is scroll down and tell the surface LIC method to use the wall shear stress vector field um, to actually determine the orientation of the surface vectors. If it's set to U, which is typically zero on the surface, or set to P, which is not a vector field, this is just a scalar field, then it will not work. So, so let's set it to wall shear stress. And then to make the coloring a bit more compelling, you can actually choose different settings for the color mode, uh, contrast, you can play with uh, this one. Oh, my bad, um, select color only. And this will give you a much more compelling image. Now, keep in mind that if you want to rotate this, it's quite heavy. So in my case, the, the Paraview decides to not show the streamlines until I release it again, which is normal because it's quite heavy uh, to analyze. Now we're gonna leave it at this uh, for the visualization, turn it back to surface. And the next thing we want to do is just like the report that you saw, we have calculated automatically the forces in X, Y, Z. Um, and you can do what we're going to do now for the pressure or for the friction force. We're going to do it straight for the total force, um, but you can do it for any component that you like. The first thing we need to do is actually to generate the surface normals. Um, now there's an interesting feature in Paraview. If you press Control spacebar, you will get the search filter. Um, you can also access this um, by just going to filters and to search. And if I then type generate uh, surface normals, I get this one. And if I click apply, this will calculate the normals, which is the orientation of each small face um, of the car. Um, and this will help to calculate the integral over the surface. So now that we have the surface normals, we can click this button, which is a calculator. Now, a calculator allows you to calculate or manipulate the data in, in the way you like. You can multiply certain pressure values with another value and so on. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create an array which is called force. And then, um, this is the array name again, but this is the one that will appear uh, in the visualization tab here. And as the formula, we will actually use um, the pressure, which is P. Um, if you're not sure what pressure is, you can just select it from your uh, list here. So the pressure value, um, which we will put between brackets, um, multiply it by the normals so that they have an orientation. So you select the normals here. So now we have the pressure on each part of the surface um, pointing along the direction of the normal. So if you have a low pressure on the roof, for example, that low pressure will be multiplied with the orientation um, of that surface so that you can later on integrate and see which parts are pushing forward, backward, up and down, left and right. So we have the pressure component and then we need to um, subtract actually uh, the wall shear stress, which is already a vector. Um, that's the one that we visualized earlier. So this is the total uh, force on each bit of the surface. But because we're working with normalized data, which means that uh, the forces, um, the pressures actually, they have been divided by the density. Everything is normalized by density. So to get the full force, we need to actually multiply by the density that was used. And in this case, that was 1.225, uh, the density of the air. So if you then click apply, we now have our force data and we're gonna add a second calculator to actually calculate the torque value as well. So again, we call it torque. The area name, we also call it torque for simplicity reasons. And then we have to um, calculate uh, the torque itself, which is, uh, for the different axes, the cross product. So you can do cross and then open the brackets um, of two vectors. Um, one is the force vector, which is the one we just uh, calculated. If you're not sure, um, it should be here under the vector list. Um, and then the second vector is actually the location um, of, of, of a certain point in space. So this is, um, I will not explain why this is, uh, perhaps I don't understand it myself. So you have to um, write zero times I hat plus zero times J hat plus zero times K hat, which are the three coordinate uh, vectors. And then um, you uh, 
also add the coordinates of the point you're looking at. Um, and this should actually calculate the torque value for each component of the car, each face of the mesh that you have on the car. So if I click apply, we now have a, calcula a calcula calculator for the normals, we calculated the force, and we also calculated the torque using that force. Now what we need to do is to integrate those variables across the entire surface of the car. Um, and again, we can press Ctrl spacebar and type integrate variables, this one, and just press apply. And now you will see that you get integration of all the fields that we have available across the surface of the car, um, which means the normals, that doesn't tell you much. Um, but um, what you can also check here is the force. If you look at this value, so 97,633. That is actually what we see here, 96, uh, 97,633. You might see some small deviations, which could be the result of a slightly different integration method in Paraview or something in your data that is not entirely consistent with the simulation. Um, but on average, um, this is actually uh, the same value. And for the torque values, it's the same. You see them in the list here as well. And you can compare them with the total values in the table. Now, if you want to just have the drag or the lift value coming from the pressure um, or the friction force, um, you can actually delete it from this formula and all the rest will update automatically into the integration field that you have here. So I will close this one again. So now the second part of the tutorial, um, the first one was on the surface. You can actually rename these things. So surface mesh. We will now load the same data again and also select the mesh. So this time we will leave it to internal mesh, which is actually not the mesh uh, not just on the surface of the car, but the entire volume of the virtual wind tunnel around it. And for the fields, um, this time I might um, load the pressure, the wall shear stress is not necessary, I'm going to disable these. Um, I just need U and P, so velocity and pressure in this case. And then click apply and wait. Okay, so now the results are loaded. Um, now it looks a bit funny because we're actually inside domain. So if you zoom out, you will see that this is actually what we just loaded, which is the full mesh, um, every single point um, or cell that you have in space. Um, so the first thing we want to do and make this a bit more visible is to create a slice, which is this button here, create a slice. And you will actually see the slice. Um, so one thing is that you can drag the slice. But I find, don't find it too intuitive. So I prefer to just um, choose whether it's normal to X, Y, Z or you can enter this manually by uh, entering the orientation of the normal. So X, Y, and Z, you can see the plane flip there in the viewer. Um, I typically disable triangulation of the slice, which is something that will cut your cells uh, or make triangles of square cells, for example, uh, which kind of biases um, the effect. Um, and typically I also disable show plane so that if I rotate and drag, I don't by accident um, just drag the plane. So in this case, just uh, to show it, I'm going to make a slice um, normal to the Y, which will be through the center of the box, which in this case will be through uh, the car itself. So if I press um, apply, you'll see that this slice is actually being generated. And then um, to make it a bit easier, if you like, you can switch to 2D mode and then zoom out by scrolling. And uh, these presets are actually the front, rear, left, right, top and bottom view. But of course, this depends on the axis uh, definition of your simulation. In this case, it's the third one. And then I can zoom in and just drag using the left mouse button. Um, now, what we want to do uh, in this case, uh, first of all, you can actually disable the one we had before. And you can see in this case, there's no mesh inside uh, the car. You do see kind of openings uh, for drivetrain and so on. Um, in this case, we want to click the slice. Uh, if you want, you can uh, uh, give it a name for reference later on. Um, and you can select surface with edges here, which will actually show you the mesh that was generated or used during the simulation. And you can see the default refinement boxes around the car, as well as the refinement of the mesh during the simulation. This is the, an illustration of the adaptive uh, mesh refinement. What you can also do is turn this back off and work with surface LIC, just like we did before, and start to see uh, what is happening to the flow in, uh, in, in the wake of the car, how much it um, speeds up and what trajectory it follows underneath the car. So this is really a helpful tool um, to help you understand um, 
what is going on the flow, if it's nicely laminar, if you have separation, and so on. And again, just like last time, um, you can play with um, the visualization settings um, to give it a bit more of a, a visual appeal. Um, I will turn it back off and then work with the normal surface. The next thing we want to do, um, you can switch back to 3D if you like, um, is to generate 3D streamlines. So we did 2D streamlines using Surface LIC. In this case, we want to do 3D streamlines. So we click on the volume and I will call this the volume mesh for clarity. You have to click on the volume and then click on this button, which is the stream tracer. And by default, it will uh, create a line for you and all the points on this line are actually the start of the trace. And the first point will be the min, min, min in X, Y, Z of your domain and this will be max um, in three dimensions. Um, so what you could do, um, just to have a rapid approach, click a certain 2D view and then imagine you want streamlines in front of the car. You can drag this, the start and the end, and then in the top view, you can do the same. Also drag it somewhere just in front of the car, for example. So this is a very dirty and manual approach. Um, of course, once you go to a more detailed setup, what you can actually do is tweak these values uh, with the actual coordinates of point one and point two. So in this case, if you go back to the frontal view, what I would uh, be able to do is to just say uh, for the Z coordinate, um, I want um, 0 0.1 and then just copy paste this on the other point. Now they're perfectly aligned. I can do the same for the um, X coordinate, so minus 3.5 more or less, this is just uh, indicative. And then the Y I can do minus 1.5 and 1.5 plus on the other side. Now before you click apply, um, you may want to tune down the settings because th this can become quite heavy. Uh, the maximum streamline length, uh, let's just put it at 10 meters in this case because it's uh, a car of 5 meters. And the resolution, let's say we want to go for uh, 50 instead of 1000. This might otherwise uh, blow up your uh, computer. And the integration direction, um, if you have a starting point for a streamline in 3D, you can go two ways. You can go upstream or downstream. Um, in this case, let's just do forward, uh, which is downstream in this case, and then we click apply. And there you have the streamline. So if you go to 3D view, if you want, you can disable the slice if it's confusing uh, and leave the car on. Um, if rotation starts to become difficult, it could be because it was reset because of its big domain. Uh, you can always uh, click this one, reset the center, and then it will reset it uh, based on what you're currently seeing, uh, which will make it much easier. Um, and if you want to avoid by accident drawing uh, dragging this line, you can just disable the show line. Um, so this is a very useful tool um, to start visualizing the flow, not just around the car as a whole, but if you want, you can also um, use this. And again, you can use the sorry uh, the, the quick and dirty technique. Um, if you want to visualize what's happening around the mirror, for example, uh, you can put it right over there. Oh, my apologies. Something like this, and then you can go to the front view, and you can drag the arrow up and down, and then what I would want to do is um, take the X coordinate, just copy paste, and paste it to the other one, um, and then the Y value. Uh, should also be the same, like this, and then the Z value, um, instead of 0 0.2, I would go for 0 0.3 for the other one, or 0 0.4, and then you see that this is the new source of your streamline. Um, let's just check in 3D, that I didn't make any mistake. Yep, that should be around right, and then you can click buy, 
and see what happens with the streamlines. And I can clearly see in close-up what's happening. So the air is hitting the mirror. Um, after it hits the mirror, uh, part of it is going above, some is going below, and some streamlines actually go all the way around the sides. And then you can see actually what's happening with the swirl around the mirror and how this translates all the way to the back of the car um, where it actually enters the, the main vortex or the wake behind the car. Um, so this, it, is a really useful tool to start analyzing what is happening around local details. Another thing I want to show you is something we also saw in the report. Um, if you remember, when we scroll down, we can see the red clouds here in this picture. And these red clouds are an indication of where drag is coming from. And technically, this is an ISO surface for the total pressure coefficient for a value of zero. So anything inside this volume is, is a low pressure bubble that is dragging um, and, and slowing your car down. So let's see how we can replicate this in Paraview. Now to do so, first I want to hide the streamline tracer so it doesn't get in the way. And then we click the volume mesh and click our own calculator. And we'll call this CP. And the result array we can also call it CP. And first we need to calculate the total pressure, um, which is the combination of the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. So the static pressure is our scalar P, which is supplied with the simulation data. And we multiply it by 1.225, which is the density to get the absolute total pressure and then we calculate the dynamic pressure with which is 0.5 times again the density times the square of velocity but because we don't we have the velocity as a vector we first need to take the magnitude of that vector so we get um, a value instead of a vector and then we raise this to the second power which is the formula for the dynamic pressure and then we divide divide the entire thing by actually um, the pressure that we find in the in the free stream velocity. Um, let's see, this is 0 0.5 times 1.225, again the density, and then we have this um, square of velocity again, but this time the free stream velocity, which in this case was 16 uh, meters per second. Again, to the uh, second power, and then we click apply. Okay, now the results are loaded, and again, uh, you can see that we're inside the box, uh, so we can zoom out to see what's going on. Um, so it's a new box, all the cells are there, uh, but this time it was calculated for CP. And if we now want to visualize what's happening, just like in the report, we can create a contour, which is basically an ISO surface, and we can set the value to zero. Um, we just need one. Uh, you can add multiple layers if you like, and then we click apply. Okay. So here we go. Um, now, to make it a bit more interesting, we can uh, give the car a normal color, like a solid color, uh, so it doesn't interfere with interpretations. Um, and one difference that we have with the report is that um, everything on the surface, like, like the, cl the car is kind of shrouded in this layer of uh, zero uh, total pressure, we have actually taken that away. Um, now that's a bit more complex, so we haven't done that in Paraview, but if you look at the uh, data here, if you look at the side view, you will see that this is actually what you see in the report if you go to the second page. So you see this bubble around the wheels, on the ground, um, around the mirrors and so on. This, this is exactly what you see in the report. So that's the last thing I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I really hope you liked it. Um, before we conclude, um, you may want to improve efficiency by saving the state. Now the state will not save the full data, it will just save all the settings that you applied here. Um, I already had a file so I'll just overwrite it, call tutorial here, um, and then save it. Which means that next time, um, if you have the same data, or actually similar data, not a uh, different car with a different mirror for example, you can use the same setup and load the data for the new case and automatically get the new values. You can do so by clicking file, load state, point to the state file, and then you can either choose to just reuse the data that it points to already when you saved it, or you can search on the specified directive for new data, or you can actually just point to new data files. And because we loaded both the surface mesh and the volume mesh, uh, we pointed to the same file twice. You can do the same and load your data. So that was it for this video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, drop your comments below and click the like button. And if you have any questions, drop a comment, ask a question, and let's get in touch. Best of luck. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.